in Seoul where impossible beauty standards and row for oh my gosh I can't talk Hello my loves and thank you for joining me, it's Kirsten. I'm doing the first of two TBRs for September. I'm so excited because Becca from Becca and the Books has put together her Bookoplathon for September. It's a month long readathon where using a Bookopoly board that she has created, you go around the board playing basically Monopoly and I love this, I'm so excited. This was one of the first or well earliest readathons I ever took part in when I first started this channel. It's been a long time since I've done any readathons and I've decided you know what the month of September is the month to do it so I'm going to be doing this readathon alongside my usual TBR game but I'm trying not to cross over any of the books that come up on either of the games so I'm going to have an overall master TBR list for September. But I'll explain that more in my TBR game which should be out about two days after this video. For now this is what I've created using that board. She did have a printable of the actual Bookopoly board but I decided to pop it in my bullet journal. I've literally just written out the different prompts like different spaces. Instead of it being like an actual Monopoly board you just go around almost like a snakes and ladders type effect and then you just go back to the start once you hit the bottom here. Now I will <laughs> put a disclaimer in, my spaces do not exactly match up with Becca's Bookopoly board or the colours because I did this all out in pencil, I was very excited, very pleased and then I realised I'd made two mistakes, I missed out two spaces so I had to redo it and then I realised I'd still done mistakes and by this point I was just like I'm not redoing it again. So some of these spaces aren't in the correct order by like literally I've just swapped them around by a space. So there are slight differences. I had already done it twice and I was just like you know what we're, we're just we're gonna stick with it. There are more bits that come up as we go but I will go through those as we go around the board because we might not even hit those spaces. I'm going to do what Becca does which is do a minimum of five rolls plus any doubles that come up because you roll two six sided dice I'll need to re-roll and that's it so we have a minimum of five books and then it could go upwards to whoever knows how many depending on how many doubles we end up getting which hopefully we won't but we'll see. I will have Becca's channel linked below so please do check it out. I've spoken for long enough though so let's get to roll number one. Okay so starting on go let's do the first roll and that's a 10 and a double. All right well we're off to an interesting start let's go. 10 so that's a dice roulette which I'll explain that one in a moment so that's the first one and let's go for the re-roll. Oh my god, are we seeing this? Are we seeing this? Okay, I'm gonna need to write this down. Favourite trope, and a reroll again. That is another 10, but thankfully no double. Featuring romance. Well, there I go jinxing myself, because one roll turned into three because we had two doubles. Like, what are the odds of that? I just... Regardless, the first prompt we landed on is dice roulette and that is where you roll the dice and depending on the number that comes up you add 50 to that and that's the amount of pages that you're meant to read or thereabout. So I decided to base it on the next roll afterwards which ended up being our double three and that works out to between 275 to 325 pages. I was going to pick this, that's actually too short. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so we're actually going to go for Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death by Selena Godden. This is 287 pages, so it's just long enough. Yeah, this wasn't the because Origin going to go for, but that's what we've ended up with. And this is how Mrs. Death is talking to a writer. Yep, talking to a writer and he begins to write her memoirs. So there is a lot to talk about death, obviously, because this is Mrs. Death talking about being a reaper basically. This is a book that I picked up because of Reagan over at Peru's Project who I'll have linked below and she just adored this book and the way she talked about it just made me instantly want to pick it up. So that's the book that we're going with for that prompt. Then we had a favourite trope and in all honesty this one stumped me. I don't really like tropes, I like it when they're kind of twisted and popped on their head and you know what there are books and things that I do like so I feel like I just... 
I don't know, maybe I just need to learn what my tropes are that I like. Regardless, I kind of took it as I like a retelling of a villain, so like a villain origin story. That's a trope that I am enjoying. So I've decided to go with a manga because, um, let's face it, we're going to need the smaller reads this month, clearly. Um, and I've gone with Moriarty the Patriot Volume 2, and this is a Professor Moriarty origin story. I really enjoyed the first one. I did read it a little while ago, but I do remember what happened. And it's all about the fact that as a young boy, Moriarty is so angry with the way that society is about the separations between them and feels that crime is the only way to get any sort of equilibrium going. So so I'm very intrigued to see how this goes, especially because I have finished all my Sherlock Holmes books. So obviously it's the time of reading all the retellings that are inspired by that series. This is one that definitely does that trope box for me in terms of villain origin story. It's something that I just enjoy so much more than the typical chosen one tropes. And then the last one was a book featuring a romance and I've gone with another book that I picked up based on Reagan's recommendations. And that is The Beautiful Ones by Silvia Moreno Garcia. And and this just sounds incredible, especially because she said it's like the Jane Austen society type setting but with magic involved and that sounds perfect and this one is a love story. I love the fact that at the bottom of the synopsis it says Nina who is our main character has forgotten that great romances are for fairy tales so I feel like the romance isn't going to be exactly what you would hope which is like that happy ending and again as I just said I love it when those sort of things that get twisted. So I'm really excited for this one as well. To be honest all three of these is a good way to start as much as the first roll ended up being a three books. I am really pleased with all three of these and I did say that I wanted a master TBR list so we are definitely heading that way. But it's time to test my luck and go for roll number two. Roll number two. Ooh, that's an 11. We can deal with that. Oh my lord. Over 500 pages. A big book. What just when I thought the game was being nice? Well the second roll wasn't a double but we ended up on a massive prompt which is to read a book over 500 pages. I feel like this month is just going to be a lot of chaos in terms of what is going to happen with this game but it's fine we're gonna go with it. So I've decided to pick up yet another Greek mythology retelling and that's Argo by Mark Knowles and this one that I'm really intrigued by I haven't heard many people talking about it at all but it's one that I found in Waterstones a little while ago and this one is all about King Pelias Peleus. He has grown paranoid and tormented by his murderous past and the prophecy of the man who will one day destroy him. So this is about Jason and the Golden Fleece. I'm really intrigued. It's not something that I've read any retellings about. I haven't even read the original myth so I probably should do a bit of research into that before going into this but at the same time Will I? Probably not. But yeah, this one intrigues me. Like I say, I haven't really heard anyone talking about it, but Greek mythology is my latest obsession. Very excited. If you have read this one, let me know in the comments below. I know some reviews that I've seen, people haven't enjoyed this one as much, but I'm really excited to make up my own minds about where I stand with this one. Okay, round number three. Third roll. You can just about see that, but that is 10. Oh, chance card. Okay, so chance card. This is one where Becca has a stack of chance cards and on the backs of each one, she writes down different books that she owns, some that she's really excited to read, some that she's not so much. So I decided to do the same, only doing four though. So I've wrote down four books, two of which I'm really excited to get to, two I'm not so excited to do. So we're gonna find a random number generator from one to four and go with whatever one that is. Okay, so it came up with two. And according to my list, number two, okay, is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. So this is a book that I've been putting off for absolutely ages, but it is Christina's favourite book from Christina Campbell Books, who I will have linked below. My mum also read this one because I wasn't sure, and this is actually her book. She said that she liked it, but it wasn't anything amazing to her. So it'll be really interesting to see who I end up going with more. I'm intrigued. This one is about Nora who finds herself transported to, 
oh okay okay this is quite interesting so Nora on her last day on earth gets transported to a library where she is given the chance to undo her regrets and try out each of the other lives that she might have had. It's one of those ones that I've heard mixed things but I hold out hope because of the fact that Christina likes it which is why I put it on this list for chance cards anyway so yeah I guess I guess we're gonna do this one. Now for roll number four. Roll number four seven published or set in 2020. I'm not sure about books that are set in 2020 but I do have one that was published in 2020 and that's If I Had Your Face by Frances Char. This is one that I've been excited to get to. It's a look at beauty standards in South Korea. So we're following four different girls in South Korea, their general day-to-day -day lives. Like it is contemporary piece of fiction. So yeah, I don't know. I've just heard amazing reviews about this one. So I've been, yeah, looking forward to it but also it's again pushing me outside my comfort zone into that contemporary genre that I wouldn't normally go for. It says in Seoul where impossible beauty standards and ruthless social hierarchies dictate your every move four women are balancing on a razor's edge. It does sound really good so I'm yeah I'm super excited. I also love this cover. I think it's beautiful. So yeah okay that was number four. Let's go to number five. Is it going to be the last roll. Hopefully last roll. A nine and it's our last one. Emoji. Okay. So for emoji it's another random generator. This time generating a different emoji and you have to fit a book that you think is going to have those emotions in it. So let's see. Okay so that is the emoji. Let me see if it will focus on my phone. Okay, so I'm taking those as cosy, happy feelings. Okay, so a book that's going to generate cosy, happy feelings. Uh, oh, actually, actually, let's go with The Tuesday Club Murders, the one that I wanted to read at the start of this by Agatha Christie because I have been desperate to start Agatha Christie, absolutely desperate. And I'm so excited and I do think it's going to give me those just cosy happy feelings whenever I read this. It is a short story collection so I will be reading this slowly throughout the month but it's one that I've just been dying, pun intended, to read. I am so so excited. So this one is starting with Miss Marple who is the person that I want to start off with Agatha Christie's books and this is the beautiful hardback edition. I really liked this actually. So yeah we're gonna... We're gonna see how this goes. I don't know, I have such high hopes for this book, but definitely gonna generate those feelings. Whether those feelings are actually in this book, I don't know, but I very much took it as how am I going to feel, like how I expect to feel reading the book, because I don't know what emotions are gonna be in the books because I haven't read them. That's what we're going with. So there we have it. <laughs> Apart from that first disastrous roll where we ended up having two doubles, it's actually been quite a good TBR. This one, which is the emoji generator, I'm very excited for this murder mystery collection. Then we have the book that was published in 2020, which is going to be a contemporary set in Seoul. Then the chance card, which uh, I still have my reservations about, but I'm trusting Christina, and that's The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. The big book over 500 pages is going to Argo, a mythology retelling. And then roll number one, which was just chaos. So a book featuring romance, which is The Beautiful Ones by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. A favourite trope, which I'm going with a villain origin story with Moriarty, Patriot Volume 2. And The Dice Relay, where I had to find a book that's between 275 and 325 pages. And that ended up being Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death. So this is the stack for this first TBR game. So I guess stick around, watch the second TBR game to see what books get added to this stack. But I think for... Bookopoly, this was really good. I'm really excited for all of these. It's such a mixture, but that's what I wanted this month. I really wanted a month where I could just kind of pick and choose whatever I'm in the mood for, and this covers that perfectly. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you're taking part in Bookopolathon, and if you are, how many roles did you end up going with? I'm really excited. I know some people are going to be doing it as they go along and just roll in as they go, but for me I like a set TBR for the month, hence why we did this. But if you have made it this far, then let's put a cup emoji, some sort of cup to go with the fact that there are cups on this cover because I really was trying to get this on here this month. And that's what we're going to go with. So thank you so much for watching this part one of my September TBR. Do look out for the 
second TBR video, which is my TBR game that should be coming out two days after this one. If you have enjoyed it, please do give it that thumbs up, subscribe, comment to let me know that you're here. Social media links will be linked below and I will of course catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.